recognize uh, the content. So all this you can learn from this passage apart from the language use and apart from the points that you need to learn from for the examination. Western values, uh, there are seven Western values that are talked about in this passage and these are the seven values which Narayan Murthy has described at length and compared to uh, the state in India. The first is respect for public good and community. The second is acknowledging accomplishment of others, accountability, dignity of labor, professionalism, intellectual independence and honoring contracts. So these are the seven values which we are going to discuss in this passage. Respect for public good, that is the first value respect for public good. Now please note that the title has the word good in it. It's not goods, it is good. So that is something which is in the interest of the public, respect for public good. So I have uh, on the screen we have two, uh, two sections. One section describes what we have in India and the other section describes what we have in the West. So, if you look at these two sections, you can compare. Uh, India has family values, which of course Narayan Murthy is very proud of, and he has expressly uh, said it. Uh, but in the West, there are family values, of course, and there are community values. Not only family values, but even the community values. And that's what makes Western countries better than India. Contradictory and self-centered attitude is something that we see in India. How this attitude is contradictory? We have so many examples and Narayan Murthy has given us at least three examples. But one brief example could be how we keep our homes clean, spotlessly clean and how we litter in public places. So it is contradictory. It's not that we don't value cleanliness. We of course value cleanliness like all people do. But the problem is that our behavior towards cleanliness or our behavior to keep the surroundings clean is contradictory. So this is contradiction in our behavior. While there you have accommodating and constant attitude. The attitude in western countries as it is observed is constant. There aren't any double standards for something which is personal and something which is public. Lack of responsible behavior is once again something that we see in India and on the other hand we have proactive problem solving behavior in western countries. It seems like we see a lot of problems around us but as Narayan Murthy observes we do not care about solving these problems while in the western countries there is a proactive behavior to solve these problems. These problems are societal. These are not personal problems. These are societal problems. But at the same time, every individual takes the responsibility to make things happen. It seems in India, we see the problems, but we do not uh, show a responsible behavior. And Narayan Muthi wonders what the reason could be, but we will talk about reasons afterwards. But right now, we'll a look at the examples that we have. Naran Muthi gives us three examples about how the uh, behavior in India is not really up to the mark and that's something he introduces in uh, second point. Here we can see a picture, respect for public good. It's in the same point, respect for public good and I was talking about the contradictory behavior that we have we can see a uh, typical, it, it could be any Indian town or city or uh, any place in India, but we can see how much litter is in the picture and this is one of the public places. Now when you look at such pictures in western countries, it is hard to find such a site. Now on the other hand, if you look at uh, the homes which are private place, uh, places, uh, private spaces, you would not see so much of litter. So our behavior towards cleanliness is contradictory and this is a sure proof of that. Reason for irresponsible behavior. What could be the reason? 
And one of the reasons that Naran Murti could think of is that probably we have a history of colonizations and we have a history of kings who thought for us thought for us and who thought for public and who decided for public. So the reason probably could be that over the years we have been ruled by others and so we have come to believe unconsciously probably that to decide and to take action is not our responsibility. Now even when we are independent and even when we have democracy we feel that somebody will decide for us, somebody will take the responsibility. So we see the problems but we do not work towards solving them. That is the problem. So this could be the reason. And at the end of this uh, first point, respect for public good, the conclusion is the, uh, that successful societies are those that harmoniously combine loyalty to family and to community. Interestingly, Narayan Murthy also looks at the etymology or the roots of this word community. When you look at the word community, it is from Latin. It is from the Latin language and it is a combination of two Latin roots. One is com and the other is anus, which means together and with. So looking at the meaning of this, we will see that community describes a meaning originally which means an individual as well as a collective. So it means a unified group, like we say in India, uh, unity and diversity. We have this uh, motto, we have this tagline, unity and diversity, but uh, looking at our behavior, it looks like we do not practice uh, what we preach. So that is the problem. So this word community also is very important and Narayan Muthi looks at its etymology. Now before we move on to the next uh, point, I would like you to go through the vocabulary items that you have come across uh, in this passage. And probably some of the words might be new for you and some might be the words that you already know but nevertheless you should go through uh, these words which are marked as bold in your textbook. They are marked in bold to show that they might be new words and you might need some help in that and in case you need help in looking up the meaning of these words there is a gray section towards the towards the binding of your book and that gives you instant glossary. So you can look up all these words in the instant glossary that you have in each of the pages. And at the end of the session, what you should do is you should try to use these words in your own language, in your own sentences. And when you go through these words again and again, when you encounter them once or twice or uh, even more than that, probably they will uh, become a part of your permanent vocabulary. So these words are something that you should try to remember in case there are new words you can improve your vocabulary. So in the examination there will be vocabulary exercises and you can remember these words for that. Uh, looking at the content, let's do a check on how much have you learned from the passage that we just discussed. It was just a small paragraph that we have discussed from the entire unit but uh, the idea here is that rather than going uh, across the entire uh, unit we should go in steps. So the first step was just the first point respect for public good and the introduction. So here is a kind of objective question. In India marriages are believed to be and there is a blank for which you need to provide a word which is used in the passage which is the adjective that is used to describe the attitude towards marriage. And the word you will see is the sacred, S-A-C-R-E-D. In India, marriages are believed to be sacred. Second question is, Indian attitude to cleanliness is? How will you describe Indian attitude to cleanliness? And as we have seen, Indian attitude to cleanliness is contradictory. So these are very objective. I mean, one word answer you can call them. Uh, they might be useful for the kind of multiple choice questions that you have in your written test 
but here are some answers that require uh, longer answers, uh, longer than one word. So the first question in this section is what does the author want Indians to do regarding societal problems? And you would see that Indians basically are compared to the Western counterparts where people solve societal problems proactively and obviously Murthy wants Indians to do the same. So Indians must solve societal problems uh, proactively. Second question, what attitude Indians have towards their families? So this is one thing that we all are proud of. We have a deep-rooted family values. So we are very committed, we are very dedicated to our family uh, families and uh, we of course value our commitment towards family, we value, we fulfill our vows to family. So these are some questions that are from the first passage and then there is some exercise that you can do on your own. From the passage that we have read so far, you should underline model auxiliaries used in the passage and guess what they express. You have done the chapter on model auxiliaries and the exercise would be to underline the use of model auxiliaries. For example, wherever you see a model auxiliary, you must underline it and you should study what meaning they express in the sentence, in the context of the passage and how they actually uh, contribute towards the entire meaning of the section, of the unit. Underline the use of tenses and try to construct similar sentences. This unit is very rich in its use of grammar and you will see that there are almost all major tenses being used. There is present perfect tense, there is simple past tense and most of the constructions are in simple present tense to describe habits and routines. So uh, one exercise you can do is you can underline the use of tenses and try to construct similar sentences. That is you should try to use the same tenses in your own sentences. So this is for you to do. So you can do it. Second point that we have is acknowledging the accomplishment of others. Out of seven values, we have discussed one value so far, respect for public good. And here is the second value in the unit, acknowledging the accomplishment of others. It seems that we observe a kind of contemptuous behavior, contemptuous attitude when it comes to acknowledging the accomplishment of others. That is. You must have experienced probably personally that when it comes to, it is probably also the human nature, but uh, it is hard for uh, us to acknowledge that somebody has done better than us. And that is one problem with our mindset. Naran Murthy uh, goes up to the point of saying that he has not seen any other society as contemptuous as the Indian society. No other society is as contemptuous as the Indian society and he is not surprised because uh, even Al Biruni who was 11th century uh, logician and a traveler who wrote his travelogues, even in 11th century after living for 21 years, remember this is not just a judgment on the basis of one day or one month. For 20 years or more than 20 years he lived in India, he studied the people of India and then he found out that Indians are contemptuous and probably they cannot acknowledge easily the accomplishment of others. So the conclusion is that we must listen to and learn from the societies who have done better than us and that could be so many other people, other societies who might have done better than us because if we fail to learn from them we won't be able to improve us. So in case we, I mean of course if we want to succeed globally we must learn from the people who have done better than us. Uh, in Sanskrit we say uh, we must always learn from what is the best. Even in English we say best practices. 
so we must inculcate or implement the best practices that we have and that's the uh, point here accountability we have an accountability uh, I mean we have this word accounts uh, from uh, not I mean it's it's a word how will you how do you understand this word accountability you must have heard of accounts and you might even know probably all of you associate accounts with the monetary transactions that is economics and things uh, where do you have accounts if I ask you you will say in banks in offices and that's how accountability uh, also you might be associating with monetary transactions but accountability stands for a responsible behavior accountability means responsibility for what you do for what you do uh, one of the speeches uh, by Narayan Murthy is titled do what you say so uh, it is in other words practicing what we preach so responsibility irrespective of position that is the value that we see in Western societies irrespective of position while in India position is given supremacy and there is an interesting example which Narayan Murthy has given us here uh, a certain minister forgot to uh, pay his taxes for 10 years 10 consecutive years and he said he had forgotten he had forgotten to pay taxes and that's not all he even got away with it people even believed that probably he really had forgotten uh, paying taxes and this is what proves that because of his position he probably misused uh, misused his position and uh, he was not held accountable so accountability is an attribute where you need to take responsibility for what you do if I whether whatever I do I mean it could be a good thing it could be a bad thing I might commit a mistake and I must take responsibility for it I must be held accountable for that and I am answerable for whatever I have done if I have done good things I'm uh, accountable in terms of credit and if I have done something wrong I'm accountable for whatever punishment or penalty it brings so that is accountability uh, second example that we have is of uh, private uh, public sector companies